Hello, I'm Rob Klaus. This is Building Your Business from the Certified Commercial Property Inspectors Association. I am so excited today. You are either about to go to the International Pro Inspectors Convention, or you've just come back. Either way, this convention had six individual commercial tracks, which produced educational information about the ComSOP, commercial buildings, com moving from residential to commercial inspections, pricing, safety, kitchens, and cost to cure. So we'd love to hear your feedback. Either you were excited and you were there, or you met us, or, or even suggestions for next year's conference. Love to hear about that. Send us an email, send us a note. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. Either fast reply at ccpa.org or to me, rob at ccpia.org. So today's building your business is uh, is one I'm very excited about. We have Stefan Tremblay from Northern Inspections in Tecumseh, Ontario. Yes, Canada. But uh, talking with Stefan, he has uh, he has been a member of the CCPA since almost, if not its origin. If you watch him on the socials, you'll see that uh, he posts just about every job. So today's conversation, we're going to talk a lot about how he started his business, where he's gone, some of his growth objectives, and uh, how he's grown his business. So I look forward to this conversation. Um, without further ado, here's our conversation. So we're here with Stefan Tremblay from Northern Inspections, Tecumseh, Ontario, Certified Master Inspector. Welcome to Building Your Business. Hey, thanks, Rob. Really appreciate you having me. So uh, we've been working on this for, for a bunch of months, and, and I'm glad we're, we're able to make this thing finally work. Yes, absolutely. So one, one of the things I, I, I love starting these things out, I want to hear a little bit about, I, I know you're, you're, you're a registered home inspector, but what was your transition to becoming commercial like? Uh, you know what? When I started uh, way back when during the big recession, um, houses in my area were pretty much staying on the market for 10, 12, 13 months. Uh, the market was dead. Uh, everything was devalued. And uh, that's when I decided to get into home inspections. And everybody said, but well, you're an idiot. The, the real estate market is in complete shambles. Why would you do that? And uh, I thought it was a good time to sort of ease my way into it. Uh, I knew that a lot of realtors, lenders, insurance people were pretty much doing nothing at that time. So I figured that it would have been uh, a lot easier to start to make connections. Um, and I've always sort of had this saying that, uh, you know, it's like planting seeds, right? I'm not going to be able to harvest that seed tomorrow. But in a year, two years, three years, all of a sudden, I'm going to have a garden full of leads. And, and, and all of a sudden, that's exactly what happened. Um, so at that time, we, uh, we were, you know, things weren't going well in the city that I'm in. We're a big automotive city, largest automotive capital in Canada. Uh, and so a lot of these smaller uh, feeder plants like tool and die shops and small parts plants, uh, these very cookie cutter, 20,000 square foot, um, you know, 15,000 square foot warehouse with a 5,000 square foot office mezzanine, they were basically emptied. Um, so I noticed that there was a need for this, but there was nobody in my market that was doing, uh, commercial and I, and I was seeing a lot more commercial stuff sell. Um, so that sort of piqued my interest where I went, okay, maybe there's a niche here that has not been fulfilled. Um, you know, maybe I should look into it. And of course I talked to Nick Romico and, uh, uh, you know, they were just putting out their commercial course through Internachi. So I went through that course and I thought it was fantastic. It's kind of the precursor to the CCPIA. Um, and then really, I just started reaching out to guys that I knew that were in trades and said, you know, where can I get information about uh, a rooftop HVAC unit? Where can I get information about 
uh, how these things are built. And a lot of these guys were awesome. And they would, you know, send me information or say, hey, there's a company here that supplies materials. And if you go on there deep into their website, they basically have uh, all of the manufacturing information about these products. And this is typically the product that we see in our area based on our weather and, and, and the climate and all that good stuff. So, um, so I kind of had to go on it a, a lot on my own. Um, and then when it came time to actually getting the jobs, you know, it was terrifying because I'm going, nobody's really taught me how to do this. Nobody's shown me. Uh, I'm pretty much going to wing it and see how it goes and just try my damnedest to get as much information as humanly possible. And uh, and it just sort of rolled from there and, and kept going. And, and the more things that I found during inspections that I didn't have knowledge of, I would go back home run into my office and just start researching the crap out of what I just looked at. And, uh, you know, cross-reference again with guys I know that are in trades and, and, you know, I don't want to give somebody a report that is lacking anything. So I basically tried to overdo it to comp compensate for my lack of experience. Um, but over time, just like with home inspections, it gets easier. You start to recognize the same components uh, even more so in commercial um, because I feel like a lot of, commercial buildings, you know, built since the 1980s are the same right up into the, you know, early 2000s. They're almost verbatim in their design, in the material. Um, so those kind of become like your, your cookie cutter commercial buildings, which are always the best money because you already go in and go, I could do this in my sleep. I can get as much info as I can on this. I'm going to write a beautiful report and uh, I'll have that out tomorrow and I'll be paid by the end of tomorrow and, we, you know, go on to the next one. But uh, but that's really how I kind of started is really on a hope and a prayer. And the fact that there was really nobody else doing it. And I did realize that a lot of smaller investors did not want to pay an engineer. And for, rightly so. These guys charge. Uh, and of course, they're they're very well needed in the industry. Um, but a lot of them were really just acting like, you know, the general contractor, like Nick always talks about, oh, hire, hire a roofing guy, hire this guy, except they were adding a lot of money on for themselves and paying those guys very little. And you got, you know, a 10 page report with some general info and, uh, you know, some filler and that was it. So, um, you know, I, most of the companies that I had done inspections for in the beginning were, were just starting out. They didn't have, you know. $20,000 to have an engineer come in, but they wanted somebody with knowledge just to let them know like, Hey, you're, you're not buying a piece of crap. This thing will work or for whatever you need it for. And uh, yeah, just kind of grew from there, I guess. So, so you, you had mentioned uh, hope and a prayer and uh, yep. as well as planting seeds. So if you could put yourself all the way back in that, in that initial furrow of, of seed, sewing mm. uh what was your biggest success and what was your biggest failure so my biggest success and I, and I still do it today sometimes begrudgingly because i feel like i've overkilled it over the years but when i was getting into it um you know that's when a lot more businesses started doing like facebook and of course we didn't have instagram mm. yet but facebook was the big thing uh, and that was a great way to make contacts um, with agents. But I also wanted to promote what I did. So if somebody didn't know what I do, um, then I could share that with them and, you know, not make a big, long, drawn out post about it. Just post a photo of a commercial building. Just say, hey, we inspected this building today. If you need an inspection, go to our website. And uh it was great because over time I ended up getting all of these other agents, new old, new and old agents that would, uh, you know, join the Facebook page. And after a few years, you kind of get enough of those Facebook memories where you can just kind of keep reposting, even if you haven't done one that week, but you did three on that day, two years before you pop those posts up and they just kind of get a constant reminder as they're scrolling through their feeds that, Oh yeah. Northern inspections, they do, warehouses or they do plazas or they do churches great so if i know somebody who's looking for that or if somebody comes up in my office and says does anybody know a commercial guy um you know they now have a guy which is good right so a lot of yeah. those referrals that i got you know i'll just say you know how did you hear about me oh 
yeah, I see all the stuff you've done uh, on on Facebook, and now it's it's more Instagram than anything else. Um, but I still do it, and it still works because I'm not sure about other markets, but you know, the last few years, there's been so many new agents coming in because everybody goes, ah, you list a house, you make thousands of dollars, it's easy money. So everybody and their brother became a realtor in the last few years, um, but then they start adding you, right? So. You, it's sort of this big tree that's growing and growing and growing and extending out. And, you know, of course, a lot of them are going to be gone in a few years, I'm sure, because it's a very saturated market for, mm -hmm. for agents uh, right now, at least. Um, but a lot of it really just came from that. And I think it's, it's a really simple method. You know, you take the cover photo of you from your report and you say, Hey, look what we did. We did this today. We did uh, a plaza. We did a warehouse. We did a church. We did, you know, uh, commercial residential split, you know, and um, what's cool too is I find after a while when you start posting those uh, memories, people will go, hey, I know that building or, oh, my dad used to work in that building. And then all of a sudden they'll tag somebody and then that person, well, now there's this like whole conversation going on that has nothing to do with me, but everybody's seeing my original post, right? So it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's we're, we're there all the time. And that's just one really, really, really simple way to do it. You can honestly, it takes 30 seconds. And on it, at this point, I just copy and paste what I wrote on the last one and add the new picture and post it. Um, and you're good. And I like it. It's, it's a very simple way. I'm not huge into social media. I don't try to post every little thing that I do because I feel like that kind of bores most people. So um, now I got nothing against inspector AJ and his, his millions of Instagram followers, although I do like his content. Um, but that's a different business, right? That's a, that's a social media well, business. So, but, and, uh, and that's, what's been so tough with social media is it's tough on a lot of these platforms to have two different accounts. Yeah. I got the, hmm. I, I, I got my personal account where I'm going to talk about my, my puppy and my, and the latest brewery I went to, and then I got my business account over here, but they, it has nothing to do with that because I certainly don't want to talk about the puppy and the brewery there. Yeah. Well, luckily for me, but back when I started doing this, I had my, my personal one, which is, you know, the, the wife and the kids and the family birthdays and Christmas morning and all that. Um, and then still me, Stefan Tremblay, but all geared towards the business. And then over time they added the, the, the business pages. So I added one of those. So I kind of like run back between the the two business ones um, and they just kind of feed back and forth from each other. But uh, again, you think it's, it's 2023 Facebook's been around since 2007. And you know, my, my kids are at the age where they're like, Oh, Facebook, you're old. It's like, yeah, it works. Yep. So as, as long as yeah. it's still working, wow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing it. Um, and that's honestly, I see your posts every day. day. See, that's why you contacted me, right? So you're seeing yeah, you're seeing all these posts, and it makes you go, "Oh, well, those guys do a lot of cool different buildings. Oh, this guy has the knowledge to do a massive structure like this. That's awesome, right?" And and I think that when that also works off the residential side, um, as much as I love commercial, yeah. I wish I could do commercial all day every day and leave the residential stuff behind. Uh, but it's still my bread and butter. But I found that once I started doing more commercial and promoting more commercial, I started getting more residential because people would look at, you know, between me and somebody else and go, okay, well, this guy is a registered home inspector or certified through Nanachi, but this guy's also doing commercial and industrial and okay, let's Google him and okay, we'll look at his website. It's all these commercial buildings. Then we go on his Facebook or his socials and Holy crap, this this guy just did a 150,000 square foot manufacturing plant built in 1920. I'm pretty sure he can look at our raised ranch and tell us if we, you know, we got a good house on our hands. Yeah. So it all kind of grew from around that. Um and and it I I feel the same way, right? Like if you were to hire an electrician and this electrician says, "Yeah, I do residential, but I also do uh manufacturing facilities and this and that." And I go, okay, well, my garage is going to be a cakewalk for this guy. I'm going to hire this guy. This is almost too easy for him. So I know he's going to do a good job and I know he's going to make sure everything's done properly. So I think that's kind of what happened um, with me. And a lot of the realtors were the same way. They'd say, well, I got two inspectors, um, this guy, and then this guy, but this guy also does commercial and industrial. 
um, and a lot larger properties. And they go, okay, well, I want that guy because that guy has more knowledge. He has more education. He has more training. He's dedicated more of himself to his craft than just getting one certification and trying to milk that guy for the next 15, 20 years, right? Yeah. So did you do anything or try anything that just absolutely was a complete bummer bust? Yeah. <clears throat> Google ads. You're crap. <laughs> but I, I think, I think the biggest part for me is you'd sit there and it would say, well, you had 50 people check out your website. We're going to charge you 300 bucks. And you go, well, I didn't get a phone call. I didn't get an email. Yeah. Um, a lot of the problem is, is I live in a border city. We live on the border of uh, Windsor and Detroit, Michigan. So yeah. I was getting some calls from people from Michigan and I go, uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to Ypsilanti for a, uh, for a commercial building inspection. Um, but I did try it and it's somebody. But if it's big enough, you would. Well, as long as the border guys would be uh. alone and not, and not look in the back of my truck and know that I was working, I'd probably be good. Um, but uh, I found okay. that the only kind of good thing about that was uh, I, I had my website hacked uh, and I lost it. And um, so I had to build from scratch and I did find because I'd read it somewhere that if you do Google ads, Google kind of gives you points, kind of help you a little bit in your rankings. Basically mm -hmm. you're paying to go higher up on the, the page. So I kind of bit the bullet and uh, I was running ads for about eight months. And then when I finally got to the first page, at least at the bottom, I said, okay. So in that sense, it's a, uh, it did what I needed to do, but it didn't certainly didn't bring me any commercial work. So I would say that uh, that was uh, a bust for the, for the money versus the return was, was pretty crap. Um, but honestly, the, the socials was the best. I did find that. Uh, and I know I'm not promoting this because we're talking about uh, CCPIA, but I got a ton of work out of that for a good couple of years. Um, when the commercial market was really picking up and it was really all I was doing was piggybacking off of their amazing um, network of websites and backlinks and all this stuff. So if somebody put in commercial inspector in Tecumseh or Windsor, Ontario, that page would come up first, the CCPIA inspector search. Yep. And I would be on it. And then through that channel, they would end up on my website and they would end up sending me a message through my website or through the CCPIA one. Um, that one, I actually did a little video for, um, for you guys. And I, I, like one year, I, I think I attributed like s over 70 grand in work, just direct leads from that website, which was phenomenal. Now the market was, was crazy for commercial at that time. Cause we're, you know, building a new international bridge and, uh, this big car battery plants coming and Amazon's coming. So a lot of other businesses came in to buy up commercial properties um, to sort of set up their shop. And it was kind of like a perfect storm. So um, that, that really did help. So that was a big one as well. Um, and for the $500 a year Canadian that I pay, it's definitely yeah. worth it. Yeah. I definitely got my money's worth. And then of course, Facebook being no money, but time definitely worth it. And I don't awesome. know crap about so, uh, computers and all that stuff. And if I can do it, it's not that hard. So, so you, you, you talked about some of the resources. Uh, one of the resources we have, we have, uh, we we have just published this year was our our life expectancy. And boy, I leaned hard on on you and your expertise to 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 help me with that because I know it's the first ever published commercial life expectancy chart. Yeah. In accumulation. So yeah. I, I got to thank you for that. It was great. Actually, it was, uh, it was really neat for me to look at it. Um, Cause of course we, we both know that life expectancies, you know, there's a lot of variables uh, to it, but I feel like the majority of common things really doesn't matter if you're in Ontario, Canada or, or, or Los Angeles, it's, you're pretty much going to run into the same life expectancy. Mm -hmm. um, some of them I was like, Ooh, that's not very long. And I know that, you know, this would last 20 years here and then somewhere else only last 10 or even five. So, um, but it, it was nice to finally have something that, uh, especially the new guys can gauge. Cause that's always like all of my reports. I always do a life expectancy on the major components, right? The roof, the HVAC, the plumbing, electrical the structure, 
um, an estimated life expectancy. So if it's got, you know, a TPO roof, it's only halfway through its lifespan. Okay. You probably got like 10 years, right? So nothing to hold it against us. And we do have a little caveat that says, you know, everybody's going to, going to yeah. give you a different answer, but this is what our opinion is based on the wear and tear and what we see. Um, same with, um, with pricing. It's hard to do pricing because if you call three roofers, you're going to get three completely yeah. different prices. So what I do is I just take the guy that I refer and I say, okay, here's a drone shot of this roof. Here's the rough size of the roof. Can you give me a rough estimate if this was to be done in the next year? And they'll send it back to me. And again, I don't know that stuff. I'm, I'm not out there doing quotes yeah. and whatnot. So to have a network of, of trades behind you is great, especially if you, like for me, I send these guys business all the time and I don't ask for anything in return, nothing. I know some guys, oh, give me, give me 10%. It's like, no, I don't want you 10%. I just want you to show up on time, show up when you say you're going to show up, yeah. uh, do a good job and do it for the most fair price that you can. And if you can keep doing those three things, I'll keep sending you business. And I had my roofer, you know, contact me one year. He goes, Hey man, I got like a hundred grand in business for me last year. Do you want money? I said, I didn't, I didn't hang a shingle. I didn't do any of that. Just keep doing a good job and I'll keep sending you business. Now, if I have a question about roofing or if I'm at an inspection and I'm going, what in God's name is this? And I text him a photo within two minutes, I got an answer back. He'll stop what he's doing and answer my question. The same thing with my HVAC guy, the same thing with my electrician, the same thing with my plumber. You know, you, you give these guys business, you help their business grow. And if all you ask for is, Hey, if I need you, can you respond quickly? They'll do it. And that's gotten me, that's made me look better as an inspector too. Cause people will go, yeah, yeah you put in your cost estimate for the next five years on this roof that it's going to be $62,000 based on the square. We just had two quotes come in and they both came in between 60 and 65. So you almost nailed it. And I go, great. I didn't do that quote. My roofer did that quote. I just put it into my report, right? So it, it kind of makes you look good at the same time. Um, but you're not giving these like wild estimates without any knowledge. And, uh, and, you know, every market has that guy that everything is a million dollars to fix. And, uh, you know, I, yeah. the biggest thing is just keep, keep it accurate and, and grow that sort of uh, grow that knowledge and, and grow that relationship um, with some trusted guys and uh, just feed off of each other for years. Most of those guys I've had on my referral list for at least eight to 10 years, you know, so if you guys had to get swapped out because of some bad employees and things like that, and that's all part of business. But, uh, but again, a, as an, as an inspector, um, you know, most guys don't think, oh, well, I have to give life expectancies and I have to give prices. Well, you, you can relay those things. So if I look at something and go, I've never heard of this brand of, uh, uh, of rooftop unit before it's a 2007. Do you know anything about them? Oh yeah, those things are great. You'll get at least 20 years out of it. Cool. Now I can give a life expectancy, right? Or a estimate mm -hmm. of life expectancy. So for the guys that are new that haven't really built that rapport, that relationship yet, um, your uh, list of life expectancies, like that takes one of the hardest parts right off the top. And, and usually one of the most viewed or looked at components of the report, especially when it comes to your, to the, the lenders, right? or the insurance company or anybody else, they always go, how long is this stuff going to last? And, uh, you know, if I have to replace it, what's it going to cost? So, uh, so it's a, awesome. And I was really happy that you reached out and uh, I was really happy to contribute to that. Well, that, that's, you know, what you said, that's the difference between being a consultant mm -hmm. and being an inspector. One, yeah. you know, I've, al I've always said, even to the guys, when I had, when I had a, my team working for me, I said, I can get most anybody can fill out a report. Yep. Take a picture, look at an item, fill a report out, good to go. But it, it's going to take that second level to be a consultant for the clients. Mm -hmm. And now you're going to build the business versus check the box. Yep. And that's, uh, and again, it's funny because sometimes when I'm bored, I'll go back and look at some of my reports from years ago. And oh. I just, <laughs> disgusted in myself you know i go oh my god these photos are terrible that thermal imaging camera was garbage i don't even understand my own report you know from 2012 and you go 
but it's great because then you, you skip ahead a couple of years and you go, okay, there's improvement. And you go another couple of years and you go, okay, but a lot of improvement. And you look at a recent one, you're like night and day, but you should, you should be improving in those scales. Uh, but I would give my advice to any inspector, don't go back and look at old reports because it's, you're terrified. You go like, how did I not get my ass handed to me from this? Like, I can't yeah. understand what this is. The photos look terrible. Everything's dark. Um, but of mm -hmm. course too, right? Like when I started, we were still doing paper reports. We were still doing handwritten yes. and burning a CD with our photos. And um, uh -huh. so when, when the apps came out, which was very slow coming and, and, you know, uh, I know Dominic had his that I tried out for a while and a couple other ones. And um you know, you're trying to learn how to use that thing as well. And they're, they were very, very basic. Um, if I was to give a report from 10 years ago to a lawyer friend of mine, he would probably chew me out for a good hour because there was, there was no substance to that report. And there's no little caveats and little, you know, li limited this and all the little things that, you know, keep us from losing our house at the end of the day. Um, but yeah, it's don't do it. If you're, if you've ever had the urge. My position I'm forced to go back and look at them because I use so much of that in 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 articles and in courses and I and they're cringy. I, I look at it and I'm going, oh my goodness, I wasn't even close yeah. to being perfect or accurate or or, or you know, I just I, I hate to write. Yeah, look at the photo and you find three other defects that you didn't even mention. You were so hyper focused on the most obvious defect, mm -hmm. you forgot what was behind it and didn't put it in the report. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it's all a learning experience over time, but uh, I, I probably won't go back and look anymore, to be honest. No, no, it's it, it, yeah. You want to you want to keep your 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 sanity and your your what do they call it the id intact yeah. because <laughs> otherwise we're all going to be uh, uh, in, in a straight jacket and a loony bend somewhere. Yeah, exactly. So so. Um, what's your goals this year uh, to now you, do you have a multi-inspector firm, correct? No, it's just me. Just me. Just working. you. That's it. How do you do all the work I see on Facebook? You just, uh, yeah, it's funny as it's just the way I've always been, you know, I've been working since I was okay. 13 years old. Um, I do have a family. So I said, wow, he doesn't have kids. I've got three kids, two dogs, a mortgage, a wife, who's also a successful business owner uh, who works even more than I do. Mm -hmm. um, but the goal for me is always, you know, so I'm, I'm 40. Do I want to be working at this pace at 60? No. So I'm going to, while I can mentally and physically do this, I'm just going to bust my ass and I'm going to pay my mortgage down and I'm going to make life a bit easier. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of cool because they said almost 14 years of doing this last year, I kind of sat down and said, you know, can I reduce my hours so I can be home more with my kids? Cause now they're at a certain age where they notice dad's not home. Right. I have one in high school, two in grade school. Mm -hmm. And with my wife working so much, they need a parent or else they're not doing their homework. They're not taking a shower. They're not doing their chores. There's nobody's home. It's a free for all. So I said, okay, I, I got to do this, which is very hard because I'm the guy that would, you know, be texting on Christmas morning. Um, which, you know, I look back and think that was really stupid and I don't do that anymore, but I used to, because I, I was hungry for, for work. But I think you get to a certain point now where you go, um, I'm going to pick and choose and that's it. And, and it, this sounds really like a really bad business tact, but I don't answer my phone most of the time. And my voicemail says, uh, I'm currently at an inspection. I'm with clients. If you would like to uh, book an inspection or contact me for a faster reply, please text me back at this number. So those who text me will book an inspection in five minutes over text. Those who don't leave a message or don't even call me, I know that they're probably just price shopping and they're just going to the next guy on their list. The other thing I did was I raised my prices. So you, mm -hmm. you get to, um, and that was Nick Gramico's big thing for years. And I remember reaching out to him personally going, I'm so busy. I can't answer my phone. Uh, I don't want to hire anybody. And it's not because I don't think I can, I can do it. 
I just looked at all of my competition, the guys that have come before me, and a lot of them had the level of success that I have now. And then they started hiring and they hired the wrong guys and their business just mm-hmm. went. And uh, then they went out of business. Uh, or I, if, you know, I'll talk to realtors and go, I'm thinking of hiring somebody. And they go, yeah, yeah, man, for sure. You need to, like, you need to see your family, <clears throat> blah, blah, blah. But when I call, I'm getting you, right? And they all said that. I'm going, yeah. well, what's the point of hiring a guy if they're like, okay, but we want Steph and we don't want Mike or, or whoever it is. It's like, well, then what's the point of going through all that in, in training a guy who's going to probably just end up starting his own business because I'm not giving him any jobs, right? So, but I get to the point where I'm like, uh, I, I can... I really do get the cream of the crop. And that's what Nick said. He goes, if you're ever too busy, just raise your price. So you take sort of that low hanging fruit clientele, you know, the awful rat infested houses or those commercial buildings that should have been bulldozed in the eighties. That's going to take you days to write the report. Um, you know, let somebody else have. Them. And uh, it, it was really a lot for me because I'm very much a type A personality. I'm, I'm very hyper-focused on business because I, uh, I've like most guys and girls out there, you go to bed thinking you're going to, it's all going to be gone tomorrow. Something's going to happen yep. and I'll be out of business. So I have to stay ahead. Right. And um, it's kind of that fear, but now there's this new fear. Like what if I piss off too many people because I don't answer my phone and do this and that. And you know, it's weird. It didn't, it, it slowed down a little mm-hmm. bit, but I actually found it to be a lot more efficient Cause I wasn't running to my truck to call people as soon as I was done, as I was done the inspection, I could be checking the furnace and on my phone and they're like, yeah, do you have next Wednesday? Yeah, I got 1230. Perfect. What do you need for me? Send me your name and email and the property address and I'll book you in. Cool. See you then. And I'm going, Oh, all right. Yeah. This is doable. We live sort of in an age where I don't think a lot of people want to talk on the phone. <laughs> I think they'd rather just quick communicate like, you know, Hey, I already looked at your website. I know you can handle this. I got a referral from my lender. Uh, I looked you up. Everything looks great. I love your reviews. When are you available? And that's an an amazing spot to be in. Like, you know, when I started, I had no business, no, I'd never even done anything business related. I never went to school for it. Um, so it was really just trying to see what works and what doesn't. And, uh, hoping that this time in my career would come. And, and now it is. Now I get to spend more time with my family. I'm not as hungry. I don't have to run around and chase every single job that comes my way for fear that I'm going to lose it all tomorrow. I think once you're in business, once you hit that decade mark, you kind of realize, okay, I so far I started in a recession. Uh, I made it through another recession. I made it through 90% of people not even having conditional offers on homes or properties you know, my, my income sort of fluctuated a little bit, but not enough where, you know, it, we were wondering if we were going to be able to pay the bills. So I think I got through all of it pretty good. Um, but I attribute all that to the work I put in the beginning, like I said, planting those seeds, planting those seeds allowed me to be able to harvest those, that work and that money generation during those really tough times where, most guys I knew in the industry were doing nothing at all. And I was not answering my phone. So I was kind of like, okay, call this guy and call this guy, trying to throw them all a, a bone if I could. Um, Cause I don't want to see anybody else go out of business, but it was just like, you know, for the guys that are starting fresh, work your ass off. Now you're not going to, you know, be making 80, 100, 150 K a year in your first couple of years. It's not going to happen but it can happen, but you have to put the work in now. And then eventually it's almost like putting on cruise control. And it's, uh, that's kind of where I'm at now, which is, which is good. But I do sometimes look back at all the hours spent on that InterNACHI forum and all the Google searches and all the manual searches and, you know, all that time spent posting ads on every freaking website in the world to backlink it to my website and it to do all that. And I go, I'm really glad I did that because now I just have to answer my phone or text people. And I'm, you know, I can book a $3,800 inspection. That'll take me three hours on site and a couple hours back at home. And well, crap, man. I remember the first time I made three grand in a month, I was like, 
high five in the world. And now it's like, oh, I can make that, I can make that in a day. That's that's great. Yeah. Oh crap, I just booked another one for three days from now on top. And it's, you know, it happens. Uh it's I always tell people if an idiot like me can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> really. So I was doing the math. Um, so you were about 26. Yep. And that was another thing. I that was, was that was tough for me as well. And it, the funny part about that is uh, all the guys that were inspectors when I started were like retired guys. So what did I do? I yes. did everybody else did. I grew a beard. So I looked a little bit more distinguished. Uh, you know, luckily for me, my mom was a kindergarten teacher for 40 years. So I had to make sure that my pronunciation and my grammar and, you know, everything was good. I didn't sound like an idiot uh, that my writing was done very nicely. Um, but the one thing that I, was shocking to me when I got started was I was the only one with a construction background. Nobody yeah. else had ever worked construction. You know, some of them were in completely different industries. They just sort of fell into this. And of course, the industry was so much at its infancy 10 years before I started. A lot of these guys were just like, yeah, I'm a home inspector, but I'm also a handyman. I'm also, I can, you know, cut your grass. And yeah. here's a, you know, no report cash only kind of thing. And um, so when I came into it, I felt like I had to work a lot harder. So I, I took as many courses as I could. I was always posting, you know, what course I did next and um, what, you know, where I went for my education training this week in Toronto or whatever the case is. And I guess I wanted to show people that just because I was young um, doesn't mean that I'm stupid. And it was great because after a few years of really kind of pushing that towards people, of course, too, then I started doing digital reports, which everybody loved. Yes. Uh, they're like, wow, I get a comment and a picture together. Now I can understand what the hell I'm looking at and what I'm reading. Um, nobody else was doing thermal imaging. Nobody. It, the only guys doing thermal were the guys doing energy audits. So I did the course for thermal and I bought uh, an, in, you know, a mediocre, I think was, my first one was an E4, FLIR E4, just to get things going. I didn't have a lot of money back then anyways. And, uh, and that blew people away. And, and of course it pissed off a lot of the old guys who were like, well, I don't want to invest. I don't want to put money. I was wearing uniforms. Those guys weren't, they were in jeans and a, in a pullover. Yeah. Uh, I had a vehicle with lettering done on it. You know, I, they always say uh, dress for the job you want. Right. Yes. So that's what I did. Cause I noticed nobody else did. So uh, luckily it worked. And over time, people stopped seeing the fact that I was a guy that was in my late twenties and early thirties by then. Um, and they just knew, okay, this guy knows his stuff. And I'd always mentioned that, Hey, I worked in residential construction most of my life. I've renovated many homes personally. I worked for uh, a new construction builder for years. Um, and people were like, really? Like, wow, a home inspector that can also fix stuff. And, and that helped too, to say, okay, we, we have something wrong here, but this is how you fix it. And I go, wow, my other inspector doesn't say that. He doesn't give recommendations on how to fix it. And I go, well, I just fixed the same thing two months ago at my house. So this is how I did it. Yeah. And that again was another sort of uphill battle is I'm not gray haired and wise and uh, grumpy and so how can I be a home inspector? Yeah, trust me, I got all the gray hairs. But it's like, how, how are you a home inspector? You're just a kid. Mm -hmm. And um, so again, right, it's, uh, I, I think a lot of my first five years was very much an uphill battle. <clears throat> Luckily for me, I, I lived in an area where there weren't a lot of inspectors. So when the market did start picking up, which was probably around 2015, it just hit the ceiling. And, and nobody, they would take anybody, anybody, I could have put an inspector hat on my kid and somebody would hire him for an inspection. Like they just, oh, yeah. there wasn't enough of us. And, uh, and that's when I kind of jumped on the rocket and ran with it and went and, uh, you know, kept me busy. And of course, every time I go to a home inspection, I always like to just slip it in somewhere, especially if it's an agent that I have not worked with before that I do commercial and industrial mm -hmm. building inspections and they go, oh, wow. So, you know, when they're out with their other realtor buddies and someone says, yeah, I got a guy looking for a warehouse. Oh, if you need an inspector, I got a guy, right? It makes them look good too. They got a guy. Just the same way that you and I say, I got a plumber. I got an electrician. I yeah. got a roofer. 
So yeah, yeah, it's a, it's been a wild ride, man. <laughs> yeah. I, I started in the eighties of all things. Oh man. Uh, when I was, when yeah, I was 21 and, and, and where you could, you know, you, you, you print a business card, you are one. And yeah. I, you know, very similar. You know, I'd show up to a job and they wouldn't trust me. You, you had to find one thing. You had to find something that would twist them around and say, oh, I do trust you with this property. Uh, so, so yeah, I get it. And I'm sure you still um, do it, so, right? There's always a dad at the inspection that's, that's secretly quizzing you about your knowledge of water heaters and oh, all yeah. that stuff. And you yeah. just, you fluff their feathers, tell them, man, you're really smart. You know your stuff. And then they get all puffy chest and and then they let you do your thing right but uh yeah I, I talked to inspectors that were there long before me that retired kind of when I first started and they're like hey man I had a checklist and a clipboard and I would take a polaroid of the front of the house and I paper clip it to the page and I'd fill out you know my 25 things but what's the surprising part was they go yeah and I'd get 350 bucks and back then I go I'm only getting three they go, yeah, that's that's always been yeah. a problem with our industry is our prices, our knowledge, our training, um, our worth, our value, our insurance, our tools all mm -hmm. went sky high. And then our price kind of just goes down and then back and then down and then back. And and we could talk about that for so, hours. Yeah. And, and I don't want to get on, on that soapbox, but some of it's the lack of confidence by the generations that keep coming in. Yeah to because they, they they some of them have the the mental belief that they can buy the business through yeah. inexpensive business yep and when i used to sit in, you know in 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 various uh uh groups with with my peers i said i wish i could get paid for what's behind my eyes and behind my ears instead of what goes on a piece of paper because all of us would have a, a higher billing per hour so yeah. thank you, commercial inspections, because we finally get to get paid what we yes. deserve. And the best part, too, is we're still now we get paid what we should get paid. Um, you know, it's funny because a lot of people, I, it always bothered me when I go, like, I'm friends with a lot of engineers. And, and some of these guys are like, oh, yeah, I charged X amount of dollars to do this building. And I go, geez, that's double what I would charge. Oh yeah. All I had to do is write a summary page and I had somebody else do yeah. it. And I go, okay. So like, where was the value? Did you go to the site? Yeah. yeah I was there when the other guys were there and, you know, we poked around, but, but when the, the client had questions, they had no answers because they don't know about it. Right. So um, by having an actual commercial inspector, the value is much greater than what you're paying. And this is what I tell a lot of investors as well. I go, I always ask, I go, what do you, what do you need this report for? Is it for peace of mind? Is it for financing? Is it to renegotiate? And it doesn't matter what they say. I can still give the same information, but I can communicate it in a way that leans more favorably, right? So if it's financing, okay, we'll tell them that the roof is good, but it's during their lifespan. If it's for uh negotiating will say it's you know it's getting very close to the end of its lifespan and that you should start budgeting for replacement as soon as possible i'm still giving the exact same information i'm warning you that you're going to need a roof one is just a little bit more palatable than the other right so that's another reason why i think i work well with a lot of investors because depending on what their needs are they might just say i just want to know okay great and then you're just going to get a straight up report on just the condition of everything and i'm going to give you a heads up on what needs to be done over the next five years um but you know if you hire an engineer engineers i have found and don't anybody who's an engineer get mad at me because you do know it's true the most of their yeah. tenure education is uh you're going to get sued you're going to kill somebody so mm -hmm. when you get an engineer's report if it's 120 pages, 110 of those pages are, please don't sue me. You can't sue me. This is only the best of my knowledge. I don't have the relevant information. If you actually sit there and read through it, you go, okay, where's the report? Oh, it's the last five pages and that's it. Meanwhile, you paid eight grand for, for a small inspection. And then if you have questions on those five pages, uh, I don't know, you're going to have to talk to the, the roofer that was there. So uh, yeah. 
I feel like the way that we have this set up, and I was really happy when CCPI came together um, uh, with Nick and everybody, and then of course you now um, taking care of the the very much needed educational portion. So like I don't have to Google everything and get lost in the rabbit hole anymore. Um, but it was nice that it was just all sort of coming together and becoming organized. Whereas before it was just like, hey, a, a commercial inspection is just a big home inspection. Yes and no, right? But but it's nice to see that we can put that seal on our paperwork. And, and you know, when I send quotes, I add the CCPA logo to the bottom, the seal, uh, and a copy of my certificate of insurance. And that lets them know that I'm not just a home inspector who does commercial on the side. Like this, this is legit. Mm -hmm. um, and it's funny because I know a lot of lenders that their policy for years was we won't accept any inspection report unless a PNG signs the bottom. And they haven't mm -hmm. done that in years because they're finding, well, we like your reports better. We get more information. Yeah. From reports. When we have a question, we can just call you and talk for 20 minutes, you know, after dinner. <clears throat> and we can get our answers immediately where it might take a week. I know some of these engineers, you get your report in five weeks. Why? Yeah. Why would it take you five weeks to do a report? I wouldn't sleep for five weeks. I That's again, type yeah. A personality, right? Can't sleep with, yeah. with work on your plate. Um, so the fact now that, you know, a lot of these uh, important people that are feeding us business don't see us as just home inspectors that do commercial with, with this organization that's been, um, you know, put together, <laughs> it's creating credibility that you can be a certified commercial building inspector. And, uh, and it's worked great. And I've, I've always tried to promote the commercial and it's like, as soon as CCPA came out, I'm like a logo on everything to show that this is, yeah. this is a real thing, right? It's just as good as that, InterNACHI certified logo. It's just as good as that registered home inspector in Canada uh, certification. Like this, this is a real thing and it's very well organized. And um, it really gave a lot of credence to those of us that were constantly losing out to the engineers and, and sort of those guys. So, uh, so that's been a huge help for sure. I appreciate that. So I, I'm, be, I'm trying to be very, I'm watching, I want to be mindful of your time. Uh, we have a, a, a time difference between you and I, and I know we're, we're doing this in the evening. It, it, to, as, as kind of a closing, and I'll let you do that, um, what advice would you give somebody just getting into this commercial business uh, that would help them plant the seeds, uh, make a deeper furrow? I don't know. Uh, what, would, what, what would you tell them? Knowledge. That is the biggest one. You're not dealing with, you know, dumb 20 year olds who are buying their first house that don't give a crap about what you're saying. When you're doing commercial, you're dealing with people who have millions and millions of dollars. And they're not just going to go, yeah, just do your thing, man. And uh, I'll believe everything you say. They'll quiz you. They'll ask questions. They'll dig deeper. And if you don't know how to answer those questions, you are not going to get a call back. So I would say if you're in a home inspector right now and you go, eh, you know, there's a lot of commercial stuff going up for sale in my hometown or my city, I should get into it. The best thing to do is pick a start date, pick a date where you're going to be a commercial inspector and make it a year from now and spend the next year all those down days you have in residential or all those times where you're at a family event and you don't really want to talk to anybody and you got your phone on you, <laughs> learn as much as you can. I mean, here's an example. Um, you know, I'm licensed by the federal government here for energy audits. I've never done an energy audit in my life ever. And I don't plan on it. I don't like it, but I have the knowledge of an energy advisor. I am licensed in Canada to do phase one and phase two environmental site assessments. I've never done one and I never will. But typically when I'm at an industrial building or a commercial building, they always like to put us all together, right? Bring in the contractor, mm -hmm. bring in the, this guy, that guy, bring in the insurance guy uh, and bring in the, uh, the phase one guy. I want to be able to have a conversation with these people. I want to be able to be part of the conversation and I want them to know that I know. And 
you get referrals from that as well. Because then you got the ESA guy whose buddy is an investor and he's buying a, a plaza in the next town over and he doesn't know who to get to inspect it. Well, this guy knows his stuff. Hire him. Here's his number. Um, we all get quizzed by the dads at the residential inspections. Mm -hmm. Uh, but a lot of times they'll go further. And there's been a couple of times where I'm just dumping sweat on the phone and you're on a conference call and there's six people and they're all worth much more than you are. And they ask hard questions. They're not stupid. They're not people that just piss their money away and trust anybody who says I'm an inspector. They'll dig deep and they're trying to establish your knowledge base and they're trying to see if they're going to hire you again. So where I know a lot of guys will just go, yeah, I do commercial and they'll kind of learn on the way. And that's, that's what I did because I didn't have as, so, as these resources, but now we have them. It's like pick a date, make a business plan. It's, this is a new business. This isn't your home inspection mm -hmm. business. This is a completely different new business. Um, learn as much as you can. If that means you got to leave the wife uh, and kids for a week and you have to spend five grand to go take a course in something that you're never going to actually do. You're going to find that a lot of that stuff, like the phase one and phase two correlates back to what I do. You know, I just, I did a, a property very quickly uh, back in February and I noticed well monitors in the property next door. I would have never known what the hell a well monitor was if I didn't take that course. So then I'm sitting there going, why are they well monitors? Clearly, there's been some contamination and they're monitoring an aquifer or the groundwater source. That's probably something that my guy is going to want to know. Do I own a piece of property that's surrounded by contaminated soil? What if he wants to build an addition? What if his business flourishes in five years and he needs to put an addition on the property? Well, now he's got to drop a couple million dollars in, in, in you know, new soil, clean soil. Probably been good to know back then, right? So when you add all this additional knowledge um, and expand on that, you know, people remember that and they seem to trust you a lot more than just kind of going in and treating it like a home inspection. So that that's that would be my advice. If you've always wanted to get in a commercial, um, <clears throat> join CCPIA, <clears throat> excuse me, take all the courses and then whatever the hell you can find online, just learn it. Even if it's an article from, 1995 if it has to do with a product that still exists today learn it and just have that that knowledge and you know you'll never know everything uh but if you know enough to impress the right people that's going to be probably the biggest uh thrust for your for your future business that's outstanding yeah i, I think your your throat timer is uh has just gone off yeah <laughs> I uh, I want to thank you for 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 spending this time. Uh, I I think whoever watches this video is going to garner a lot of interesting information that they can almost immediately put to work. So yeah, I look I, forward I, to I, being able to shake, shake your hand in person. Yeah, well, if you ever come to uh, Canada or Detroit, I can always make the trip. Or uh, I was in Vegas, but I wasn't in Colorado. And of course, when I go to Vegas, it rains and floods. So that was a great. Uh, trip but uh hopefully I, i'm hoping one day uh maybe to make it down to one of the house of horrors uh just to be a fly on the wall and 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 just to kind of you know be part of that environment and, and get to know a lot more inspectors i know it's tough in your own in your own environment in your own city you're, you're surrounded by competition but uh it'd be nice to go sit down and have a meal with uh, guys that aren't afraid that we're going to steal each other's business so so it's on it's on the future plans that's for sure that, that'd be fabulous thank you again and until we uh we get to see each other face to face uh we'll continue to share share emails and uh and social media posts all right sounds good thanks rob appreciate it man yep bye-bye see ya